Hi everyone and welcome back to my desk. After successfully creating my Zigbee home automation network and adding the first devices to it, now it's time to extend it with this additional smart switch that I got from a company called Zemi Smart. This is a Zigbee switch that is intended to be used for lights. It's white, uh, it requires neutral to be connected. It's based on touch, which actually is just a button and it's a three gang switch, so it can control three independent circuits. Now the, the position that I need this to be mounted on only requires one light, but I'm planning to use the additional two buttons to control some other lights that will be connected to other module through Home Assistant, so we can make the entire setup more interesting than just uh, wiring it up. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I got this is that there is no manufacturer logo. We have the model here on the back, uh, but there is no actual logo of the manufacturer, which in fact we're gonna see inside. So this is the manual and this is the actual switch. Inside the box, we also have two screws so we can mount it. Let's take that away. And if we flip the switch, we can see that this is from the company Zemismart, which appears to be making quite a lot of uh, devices. This device was actually sent for me to test and review, and this is what we're gonna do today. But before we jump into any details, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Altium 365. If you're designing electronics, you know how messy the process can get. Scattered feedback, outdated files, supply chain surprises, and endless back and forth between teams. That's where Altium 365 comes in. It's the ultimate cloud platform for hardware development, built to keep your project fast, organized, and manufacturing ready. With Altium 365, your entire team stays in sync. Real-time collaboration means no more digging through emails for feedback. Comments and markup live right in your design files. Automated bone management pulls live pricing, availability and risk alerts so you avoid last minute part shortages. And with seamless ECAD MCAD integration, mechanical and electrical teams work together without errors or rework. Everything is secure in the cloud with version control so you never lose track of changes. Plus AI powered tools help you spot risk early and speed up decisions. Whether you are a solo designer or part of a global team, Altium 365 streamlines the journey from concept to production, cutting delays and cost along the way. Stop wrestling with disconnected tools and start building better electronics faster. Check out Altium 365 from the link in the video description and claim your subscription bonus. Now, if we look at the switch on the manufacturer website, we can see that there are three variants. So one gang, two gang and three gang. So you could control one, two or three independent circuits. And if we go down to see the description, this is advertised being able to be controlled uh, via Apple HomeKit and the Tuya Smart app, because I'm guessing that's the firmware that's running on it. It uses buttons from a mouse or so computer mouse, so they could withstand quite a lot of presses. And if we go down, uh, we can see that they're actually advertising this as being elegant, compact, and that it can be easy to implement within an existing installation. So on the back, it uses uh, the standard switch box, which is 86 by 86 millimeters. And you could see here, it requires live and neutral wire, and then the phase wire that turns on the light based on the switch position and the switch being pressed. I'm not gonna use this with the Tuya app, but I'm gonna connect it with Home Assistant. We can see that based on the rating, it can have a maximum of 700 watts per gang for an incandescent load or 300 watt per gang for an LED or a 16 amp max. Usual LED lights are way below that and can work from 110 to 240 volts, both on 50 and 60 hertz. So it can be used both in Europe and in the States as well. Now, if we take a closer look at the switch, here is the front plate and this front cover is made out of thin glass. So it actually feels quite nice to the touch. And if I press on the switches, no matter where I press, I can hear the click of the button. So they must have an interesting lever mechanism or something that 
presses the button no matter where I click. So this actually looks quite nice and it's quite stylish on the side as well. And here is the back. It appears that I should be able to pry open this front cover from the back. Let's see how that looks. I'll try to be careful not to break it. Okay, so this is the front plate. It appears that there is a circuit board there in the back that holds the buttons. And all the mechanics are inside. We have this frame that goes over it to cover the mounting plate and then the mounting plate is being screwed into the uh, wall. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna be able to mount this in my home because I'm using the standard ones that are pushing to the side to be mounted, but we'll see. On the back, we have the connection. So we have neutral and live and we have life one, life two and life three each of them being connected from a different button. Let's try to connect this to the bench and uh, make sure that we can interact with it on Home Assistant. Here I have it wired up. I'm using a power lead so I can connect it to an outlet and being that this is reversible, we can never truly know which of the wires is live and which one is neutral. So one of them goes to the live terminal and the other one to the neutral. The neutral comes out and goes to the light bulb. I'm gonna use just a regular cheap uh, LED light to test it out. And from the L1 contact, I'm also connecting to the life on the bulb. So let's flip this over. And I'm gonna connect it to power for uh, the first time. Let's see what happens. Okay, so nothing yet. Let's try the switches. Okay, that seems to be working. I'm guessing that those two are working, but currently we do not have anything connected to it. There's just this light that is connected here. And as a basic switch, this whole thing works. Now let's go into Home Assistant and try to pair it up and control it through Home Assistant. Also, there seems to be a very faint indicator light uh, that's on the switch, so you can located in the dark and it also giving us status updates. I'm not really sure what that means. So I'll have to check the manual to see which one I need to connect to enter pairing mode, but let's see. So you see that one is being on and off and this one flashes. Let's consult the manual. And based on the manual, it means that this is now in configuration mode. Let's see what happens in Home Assistant. Okay, so here I am in Home Assistant. Let's try to add a device. Currently it's searching. The light is no longer flashing. Maybe I need to turn it on for some time. Yep, so now it flashes. Okay, probably it exited configuration. Let's try and hold it for a bit more. Okay, that's weird. I'm gonna try to cut power entirely. So that should be empty now. Okay, and yeah, immediately it started to configure, so we need to specify a name for it. Okay, so here it is. And we have three lights. When I trigger it from Home Assistant, you see that it turns off and I can control it both ways. This is for the second light and the third light. 
So, and we can configure what happens with the lights and what is the power state upon power loss. So if we happen to lose power, how the light will appear next time is being turned on and I want off because that's how usually lights will work. Now, if you've seen my original Zigbee setup video, you would see that I've used this as a test light. So I could demonstrate that it's all working. And this is just a simple mini switch that controls an incandescent light bulb. And we can use different switches to trigger it as well as control it through Home Assistant. Now, what I want to achieve is to connect this switch to turn on this device because this I'm planning to add to the light that's going outside. So the one that uh, lighting up on the balcony, but I do not have a wire coming in to this switch. So I can use the gang on uh, this one, but I will use this as a trigger to turn on this and this. So hopefully we can make it work. Let's go to Home Assistant to try and set it up. So the way how we can add this is through automations. If we click on automation, we can select to use the device as a trigger and the trigger will be to turn the light on. So whenever the light is turned on and off, I'm going to add an action on a device and the device is test light and I want to toggle the test light. So whenever I press, I want to toggle this. So let's see, we'll name it as toggle other light and let's see if it's going to work and it does. So you could see now we have two independent devices being triggered. So this one still works. If we have something connected to this state here, then you could see that this now turns it off. I can choose to turn it off from here and I can turn it off from there. I can use the switch as per usual. And I can also use this touch, even though I don't have a physical connection between the two. So I can basically control any of the lights in my house using any of the switches without them being wired directly. Now using this automation as it is, I can turn on the light, but then I can turn off this one. And if we go to home assistant, since this one did not turn off, then it will show it as being on. Uh, which might not be a big deal, but we don't really know the current state of the other light. So I want to kind of change this. So I'm going to delete this automation and I'm going to actually create two new automations. So whenever the guest room lights is turned on, I want to add an action that the device will turn on. Okay, save. And then I'm going to add another one using the same device. So but this time, I'm going to select when the light will turn off to trigger the test light to also turn off. So now we have two automations. And in theory, this should all still works the same. So I turned off the light. If I turn it on, you could see that both of them turned on. And if I turn it off now, it immediately shows the right state. Again, not exactly correct because I can choose to trigger this one off and this one triggering it off will not do anything to be able to directly link both of them. So they are at the exact the same state at all times. We need to add another automation on this one, same as we added on this button. So whenever it's turned off, it turns off this. And whenever it's turned on, it turns on this. So we have an entire sync on both of the functions. 
And with that, you should now be able to create additional automation for smart home setup where you can connect disconnected devices in your setup where you can turn off lights or any other switches from anywhere else in the house. Additionally, this can all be put into a scene where you can decide which lights are gonna trigger on what uh, triggers, but that will be for another video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions regarding Home Assistant, if you have something that you want me to show you or you want to see. If you have any questions regarding this switch, then be sure to leave them down in the comments as well. Make sure to subscribe so you see my future Home Assistant endeavors. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.